Serious questions being raised in that story. How serious really is the shortage of ammunition for our defence services? That's our top focus tonight. Joining me, Ajay Shukla, Strategic Affairs Editor at the Business Standard. Lieutenant General Shankar Prasad, former DG of the Infantry, is also joining us. Naresh Gujral, Member of Parliament of the Shiromni Akali Dal and a member of the Parliament Standing Committee on Defence, joins us. And Ajay Chaudhary, Chairman of the CIS National Defence Council, is with us. Appreciate all of you joining us. Mr. Naresh Gujral, let me start with you, since you are a member of the Parliament Committee on Defence. Your first reaction to those reports which show, particularly the first one, that a lot of the main state tank ammunition is at hopeless levels, even below critical numbers. We have some ammunition that will last us less than 10 days of war. Your reactions when you see those statistics? Absolutely shocking. We had no idea that this was a state of affairs. But Rajdeep, we cannot look at this in isolation. Look at the cancer that has set in in this UPA too. Starting from the CWG scam, moving on to Adarsh, moving on to the, the 2G scam, the open spat between the senior ministers, the mishandling of the way Baba Ramdev and thereafter uh, Anna Hazare, they move they, from one blunder to another, this UPA Goes on. We are talking. Gone. I'm sorry. I agree. Yeah, I'm coming to it. I'm sir, coming sir, to it. What I'm saying is, this is a very sensitive issue. Today, you are a you are a member I'm of the uh, to parliament I'm, panel on defence, sir. These are shocking figures that look squarely at the state of our defence preparedness. And you are exactly saying to us, you're shocked. That means parliament has never been informed I of this. Am absolutely shocked because of the indecision at the level of the government. Now, Eve, let us start with these exercises which Indian Express, the users talked about. Yes. These were normal exercises, but so much is the trust deficit that the government hit the panic button. And at the same time, this letter which has been leaked, which was written by the army chief to the prime minister, which has been leaked to the media. Right. We are all extremely concerned about the contents of it. And now you are giving details. And it is absolutely shocking. Uh, will you call the a Deputy meeting of your panel? Will yesterday. your next parliament panel Sorry? look at the will your next meeting of your parliament panel, sir, absolutely. look at these issues? Rajdeep, yesterday was a meeting and I made a request to the chairman that we should summon the army chief and ask him because whatever is coming out in the public domain is absolutely startling and shocking. You and it, it, it is something which, which causes great concern in, in our minds. You are saying that the army chief should be summoned to try and get an idea of just how ill-prepared we are if there was a war? Yes, absolutely, because so far we have never been told all these things that I am hearing today. Okay, you are saying the parliamentary panel has been kept in the dark in a sense. General Shankar Prasad, are you horrified or surprised or shocked like uh, uh, Mr. Naresh Gujral is by the facts that are emerging in these stories? 97% of our... Uh, air is uh, 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 air arsenal is obsolete. The fact is that we are we have ammunition that will last us less than ten days in a war. Right, Deep. I am not shocked because I am aware of all of it for the last so many years. But it is horrifying that year after year the same figures are projected to the government and now to the media. The unfortunate part is that last many 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 years. Yes. The preparation has been consistently going down and every year the percentage falls. There is a certain quantum of ammunition yes. which is called the WWR ammunition. Some at intense rate, some at normal rate have to be kept ready at all times. Unfortunately, that figure is not being maintained. Who yes. is responsible for this? Is the service headquarters responsible for it? They would be responsible for it if they did not put in the correct demands at the correct time. That who is the next agency? It is the Ministry of Defence. Yes. And the next agency is the fellow who is going to produce it, the Ordnance Factory Board. In between, somewhere the DRDO also chips in. And of course, if the ammunition is imported, the foreign vendors. So there are so many agencies. Let us pinpoint as to where this matter rests all the time. I'm going to come. And I must say yes. that whether it is ammunition or whether it is equipment, yes. this situation is horrifying. I am not shocked because I am getting used to receiving these shocks. Okay. Over and over and time and time again. You know, the service chiefs have been writing about it, Rajdeep. Yes. And we are taking perhaps... No, you see, the problem arises. Yes. And simply in one sentence, 
that the responsibility of defense of india is believed to be believed to be yes. only of the armed forces headquarters the ministry of defense is not responsible let me please put it very clearly okay the defense what? of india from external threat is the responsibility of the ministry of defense just as the internal security is the responsibility of the ministry of home affairs Yo so if the defense preparedness is lacking today yes. please call the defense ministry officials and the minister to the parliamentary board rather than to summon the army chief okay, the army saying... chief has already been represented yesterday by the vice chief let, let and he has q and g let, 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 let me get a quick response the ministry of defense to answer this naresh gujral get the ministry of defense and the defense minister no. to explain we will definitely but we just want to understand this whole situation in entirety from the, the from the army chief we want to understand the total uh, the, you know the uh, you today you have given some certain figures we were not aware of those but we want him to to confirm that all that you are saying is absolutely true okay so you are you are, you are first going to call the army chief but you will right also chief. call just a minute uh, general you will also call uh, the defense minister as, if necessary as well as mod officials ajay chukla you know we are all acting as if we are startled here but the fact is you also put out a report in business standard with with equally startling figures 80% of tanks you said in your report were night blind india's 220 odd artillery regiments had equipment that was quarter of a century old i presume you two are not surprised you've been a military man yourself and this is not a new problem uh rajdeep i have to say that you know i began by believing that all this conflict between the chief and the government was bad but the way that all this stuff is coming out into the public domain i've been writing about this for the last 10 years and nobody really cared a sausage now suddenly this is center stage so i think the big lesson that really comes out is that conflict between the services and the defense ministry seems to lead to a degree of plain speaking that brings all this out in the public domain clearly the army's generals have been reflecting all of this very diplomatically but they've not gone out there and thumped the table they've not said that our army is unfit for war and we need to get all these things it is only now when you've got a really bad relationship between the army and the mod that the generals are actually saying this right. so this is very interesting let's keep the relationship bad let let's get ready for war yeah you know it, it is it, it's unfortunate in a way that these issues have to come to the public domain at a time of a strained civil military lead, uh, relationship but let me uh, bring you in mr choudhury as someone who's looked at this issue very closely you've looked at defense procurement where is the nub of the problem is it because some are suggesting that far too many companies get blacklisted by the ministry even on the slightest suspicion is it red tapeism is it the bureaucracy is it a tussle as general prasad seems to suggest with the mod uh, and the armed forces is the time taken for trial time for testing the problem where is the problem there are <clears throat> if you look at there are two issues one is the ammunition the other is the equipment equipment is also a very big issue because if you see all projects get delayed by years and years and years what would be the average delay on a project sometimes 5 years sometimes 7 years sometimes even 10 years so you do have delays in projects like that and i think a very big issue that is sitting inside is that all kinds of people go and influence all kinds of uh, procurement because of the whole issue is around the fact that let's say in the next 10 years the country is going to buy 80 to 100 billion dollars worth of equipment right everybody in the world is looking at india today so what happens is that all the global companies are coming and sitting here trying to get business as a result what's happening there's whole bunch of middlemen whole kinds of issues are happening it just delays procurement and the second issue there is that we have done nothing in the last 15 to 20 years to domestically manufacture these products all that we have done is leave it to ofb and the defense uh, manufacturing organizations the productivity there is 15 lakhs a year as compared to 30 lakhs normal productivity you know in in, in fact you you you're, you're coming up with an important point which mr mr naresh gujral you are as i said member of that of that standing committee in parliament on defense you said you're shocked by our report but as as the facts are coming out the generals knew about this any military strategist ajay says he's been writing about this for the last decade and the point is coming out that public sector also needs to be accountable have you all visited these psus because many believe that the, there's a serious problem both of quality and capacity many of them don't adhere to schedules do they need to be put under the scanner call the psu chiefs these defense psu chiefs also not just the army chief why don't you summon the defense psu chiefs 
you are absolutely right we will have to do that now but in the past i must say rajdeep that it has never been mentioned to us they have been coming to our committees from time to time but this kind of situation has never been brought to our notice which means we were there was all along told which means sure that there was a vested interest in keeping this information away from the parliamentarians well this, this so it seems now and 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 what were you told by these psus when they would come before the parliament would they tell you that no, there was we, a no no we were not talking to no 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 psus were not coming before us yes. we were told that the indigenization process was extremely slow because transfer of technology was not happening or it was very slow yes but we were completely prepared yes. and that we could face any eventuality time and again we were assured of this i i ajay shukla does that mean that somebody was lying you believe to the parliamentary panel ah uh, no rajdeep nobody was lying the problem was nobody was interested uh you had a bunch of generals who were warming their chairs in army headquarters who were not going out there and projecting their requirements strongly enough there was this complicit agreement between the mod generals and the ministry themselves uh, that we never really have to go to war we'd never actually be tested out there this this stuff would never actually come out in the open so you had situations where and you know we're all blaming the upa government now yes let's remember that this whole shortage of artillery ammunition stems from the fact that mr george fernandez wanted to set up the artillery factory in his home constituency of samastipur and that factory ran was to be set up in partnership with south african company denel which then got blacklisted and which is still waiting to start producing so the whole supply of 155 mm ammunition which is one of the key uh, yes. things in anubha's report uh, is not been manufactured because of this constituency uh, interest of the defense minister himself shocking now when the army generals are not interested in putting forward the the yes. thing the bureaucrats are happy to sit on the files the politicians are happy to just bad mouth each other then obviously the the actual issue of defense preparedness just gets completely swept off the table so nobody's what, interested in you know this is a sense highly sensitive issue it's always been kept under the table because of national Raj security so called national if i need yes. to make a point at this stage yeah yeah yes general prasad give Raj me a solution Deep, it is very unfair for ajay yes rajdeep it is very unfair for ajay shukla to say that a bunch of generals were warming the chair let me tell you I have been in the army at quarters as senior rank for a couple of years yes. and I'm aware of at least 3 to 4 or 5 chiefs who have been consistently writing such letters. Yes. I when I was a brigadier in the army at quarters yes. the army chief then wrote a letter to the prime minister. But nothing and changed after right through my service. But nothing there changed. There is a single General, army chief General Prasad yeah, nothing changed. So what's the solution? The point. Let I am I am contesting I am contesting Ajay Shukla's statement very strongly yes. to say army generals were not bothered they were warming their chairs I am sorry Ajay Shukla left the army the colonel he has the foggiest idea of what he is talking about and belittling generals who Let, retired not, to ten or fifteen no, no, years ago No let's let not make this worse very categorically Prasad in my no, opinion no, no, Rajdeep let Rajdeep, me put it on record very that? clearly yes. that every single army can chief has called yes. for modernization has just one minute let me complete yes. please. you can go and record and check yes. every single army chief since the last five chiefs yes. i can assure you have written similar letters to the prime minister to the defense minister and all the combined conferences that have been held in delhi such deficiencies have been brought in front of raksha let me get ajay and members of the ccs what more do you want the army generals ajay, to do ajay respond what more do you want the generals That's to do that's absolutely correct I think that a general who believes that his job is to write letters is a sad reflection on the ethos of the Indian Army. This is not the Indian Army that I joined. It's not the Indian Army that I was brought up in. It's not the ethos that I was steeped in. The ethos that of the Indian Army is to make sure that your men get the wherewithal to fight with when they go into battle. To make sure that those young officers and those soldiers that die over there do not die because of a shortfall of weapons, ammunition, and so on. And if they are doing that, then don't, don't, don't make it emotional. Ajay, don't make it emotional. It's not emotional. Ajay, it's don't don't make it emotional. It's a practical reality. There's a practical and reality. Let's please don't, don't make it emotional. Let so you know. Let, uh, all of you died, but I wrote a letter. No, no. I'm afraid. I mean, that general should not be in his chair. Okay, hold on. Let you know. Let, let's not make this personal at one level. You know, uh, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, what is the solution? You know, we can go on bickering about this. the army chief will retire on may 31st another army chief will take over he may as ajay says write more letters the army is conscious of it 
but nothing seems to change if you had to offer today solution then hopefully someone out there is listening to them we've got a member of the defense uh, panel in parliament listening what are those two or three solutions you would offer concrete solutions to change this terrible terrible situation one major issue that is there is this whole issue of procurement i think the procurement process itself needs to become completely streamlined and professional we should pull professional people there and who are trained to buy things not people who come in and go out it should be continuous the same people should be around for four or five years because they know how to buy so specialized specialized people, people trained people number one number two they should be given a mission mode activity there you have to buy this by this date this by this date this by this date and that has to be made to happen now i think it has it is so important that a matter like this literally has to be reviewed at the pmo level i believe the pmo should set up a uh, organization the way we are recommending that they should set up an organization that reviews all procurement reviews indigenization because otherwise what we are fundamentally doing is we'll continue to import 70% of our equipment from outside and we'll continue to have delays and we will bring no technology and I mean, create no jobs allegations of corruption red exactly. tapeism exactly processes will continue right. to get delayed right. i'm going to give you a final word naresh gujral because you said that you are shocked by our report can we expect next week you have another meeting of your panel you are saying you are going to summon the army chief to get more details but can we expect that some of these issues that we've raised will now be you will put pressure on the defense ministry to come up with answers it won't be cloaked under the carpet under the guise of national security there is no question of that we are meeting on monday and i think this time the meeting will see a lot of fireworks and i am more than convinced now that the army chief should come before us and express all his reservations and give us details of what he thinks is missing and and and, and you are assuring us that as far as your parliamentary panel is concerned you will you will try and hold those responsible for this accountable because the accountability is a big problem in our system 100% we are all extremely concerned about the security of this nation and we will do our utmost to ensure that army gets its supplies in time okay we are going to uh, take your word for it that meeting is coming up on the 9 uh, i am glad that uh, you will take Point. note of our report and uh, that hopefully put pressure on the system something needs to change ajay shuk yes yes ajay one, ajay one quick point yes yes ajay rajdeep uh, you know it's really nice that all of this has come out in the open even if it's come out as a result of friction between the army and the and the mod yes. but now if this deteriorates in parliament into a upa versus non upa battle all this momentum would be lost so i would appeal to the standing committee of parliament to really treat this as a national issue not on partisan party lines but to do it for the mr gujral mr gujral it's not about nda versus I, upa I, it's about I the indian nation i entirely agree with what ajay is saying i entirely agree with what ajay is saying nation comes first and we should not be playing politics with all this okay well let's hope that no one plays politics with this our sole purpose in this report has been to bring to the nation just what's gone wrong with our defense procurement policies mr choudhry general prasad ajay shukla naresh gujral appreciate your joining us here on our talking point tonight what's the editor's take where do we stand general vk singh will retire on the 31st of may but lost in the fog of the general versus government battle is the real problem of an antiquated army war machine in urgent need of refurbishment this is a problem that goes well beyond individuals to a system where defense procurement is caught in a web of red tapeism intense corporate and dare one say corruption general singh may well fade away the problem of deficiencies in our defense preparedness will not